The London Underground connects the whole of Greater London, allowing people to travel from one side to the other through its vast network of tunnels. It is the oldest, and with 250 miles of track, it is also the longest, and every mile has a story to tell. It connects rich and poor, young and old, and is the third busiest underground network of its type in the world. Over three million people travel through the underground system each day. Most will travel completely unaware of the underground's dark history. However, some people bear witness to events which will stay with them for the rest of their lives. And he just suddenly fell. Literally threw, threw himself off the platform in front of me. The noise has stayed with me all my life. Although the system often offers a good service, it is still fraught with delays. These can range from minor signal failures to trains breaking down in the tunnels. Being so isolated from the outside world means that these can be harder to deal with. Perhaps the hardest event of all is a suicide on the tracks. There are very few ways to commit suicide that are more public than in the underground. We took the underground that day because neither, neither my friend nor I had ever been on the underground before and we were 17 and it seemed very exciting and we were on our own and it just seemed like the really good thing to do that everybody did um, that came to London. We were actually standing on a platform and we were waiting for a train um, and it was very busy on the platform um, but over to my left there was there was, um, it was a man standing there, um, he was quite a young man, um, and I suddenly realised that there was something happening, and I just have this image of him, um, of him being upright and then being horizontal across the front of the train as the train came in, and there was this incredible screaming, um, but I think, I don't think it was the screaming of him, I don't know whether it was the screaming of the people on the platform or whether it was the squealing of brakes, um, it was just squealing and screaming. Another person that can be heavily psychologically affected by such incidents is the driver of the train. David Hoser is an ex-motorman who worked as part of the underground staff for many years. I'll tell you about one, okay? because I actually had two. Uh, the second one was far too, uh, it was too much. But the first one I'll tell you about because my reaction, and even today I don't understand why, but it was of anger. Uh, I came, it was in the rush hour, and uh, we were, I was following, a, I was on a circle line, following uh, an A60, which was going to, I think probably Liverpool Street or Moorgate, or Allgate, it could be any of those. And as I came into the platform, this guy did a, a flyer, literally threw, threw himself off the platform in front of me. My reaction was just to drop the handle straight into emergency. And then, and then I thought, you bastard. And I, I, I don't understand why. My reaction was completely... Like, and then there's people on the platform who were obviously, you know, screaming. So I blew, blew up, that's hit the whistle for the station staff, the station inspector. And he came down and I said, I've got a guy under. And he said, OK. Uh, and what you do, the procedure you should do then is to turn the juice off, obviously call the, the, the emergency services or the doctor, um, and then they, they take over. You don't do anything. But for some reason, I... I don't know, I suppose it was a kind of hope thing, but I, I actually jumped down onto the track before we turned the juice off, and he was dead. He was under the front pair, and uh, yeah, he was dead. So I got back up on the platform, went down, and pinched the wires, and the juice goes off, phoned in to the control and said, you know, let them know while the station inspector was dealing with the, the emergency services. Um, and of course, then we have to clear the train, and then people are clear from the station, and it's it's and it's, this is in the Russia, so you can imagine it was complete chaos. 
At that time, there wasn't the same sort of outpouring of emotion that you might get if there was an event like that. Now, you know, people didn't leave flowers or anything. We just all sort of went away, and it was quite strange. Um, now, in those days, we got no counselling. There was no, you know, this is in... Gosh, when would this be? This would be 72, 73. Um, there was no counselling, there was no, uh, what they used to do, if my memory serves me right, I got relieved at Hammersmith, a guy took it into the depot, and then um, I was told to go home. So I went back to Baker Street on the cushions and um, signed off. Um, and then I came to work the next day, um, and you stood spare. It does still haunt me. Uh, I can't get on the underground without wondering whether it's going to happen again. I'm very relieved when the train covers the platform. Uh, I don't know whether it stayed with me longer because it was the first time I travelled on the underground. Um, but I, I've never seen an, I've never seen it happen again. It was just the first time I travelled on the underground. That's what I saw. I was angry. Yeah, at the time I felt angry, and then I, you know, when, once the adrenaline worn down, I was very young. I mean, I was in my twenties, so, um, so once it, it dropped down, then um, I made a point also of not ever finding out what his name was or anything about him. I, I wasn't interested. I'm, you know, I, f I felt that um, no matter how, oh, I mean, it's very easy to say now, but I. At the time, you know, my twenties, I thought, why did you pick me? Why did you do that? You know. Suicide pits were introduced on the Jubilee line in 1926 to prevent a rise in the number of fatalities. There, there was certainly a lot. Um, I think at the time, I could be totally wrong here. I think there was somewhere near about 50 a year when I was on there, and I think the favourite place was King's Cross. A recent addition to the latest section of the Jubilee line is the platform's green doors. These actually block access to the track if the train is not in the station. A study lasting 11 years showed that they have reduced fatalities on that line by up to 60%. Why people do it, I just don't know. I can't imagine why you would want to do that. <laughs> 